Here's Gerard's foot. Well, he's got severe hallux limitus. You can see that. Looks more like a bunion there, but on top, the bone is going up way high here. And he can't really bend his toe up. That is it. Up and down. That is the total range of motion that he's got from here to there. Not very much at all. And Gerard came in from San Francisco area. That's right. Right. And how'd you find us here? Uh, I Googled. Uh -huh. uh, painless, uh, painless bunion surgery. Great. And you at the top of the list. He's looking for a unicorn and he found it. Okay. Right on. There we go. Just put the medication in. Gerard's feeling a little sleepy yet? Getting there? Yep, indeed. It's okay. kicking in. It's kicking in. All right. Just a matter of le less than 30 seconds, we'll be ready to numb up that foot. Let's see how the arthritis is really all over that place. And we'll take a after picture there and see all that bone above the red line. So what we did is we made the skin incision. Took out actually a wedge of skin because it was so bulky. And after that we separated this tissue from the underlying tissue which is the sub-Q from the deep fascia which is this tissue here. As you see it was cut on the top here all the way down that way and then straight down this way and the other side is right over here. And then we very delicately peeled this tissue away from the bone, exposing all the abnormal bone growth. And you can see how much abnormality there is here on the first metatarsal head. As it comes out of the bone, you can see how much growth there is. And all of this bone to the t above this instrument is all abnormal bone growth all the way around as well as the growth on the opposite side of the joint, which is all of this bone. You see we have a loose fragment here, because as the bone grows, it becomes weak and it cracks off. And you see this piece right here? Look how loose it is. So that's a fractured piece of bone on this side of the joint. And so we have a lot of work to do. And we're gonna start videotaping once I get done cleaning all this stuff up. So now what we're going to do is that, as you can see, we clean up all the bone, we shave the bone off the top, we shave bone off the opposite side. As a matter of fact, well, why don't you go to the table yeah. and show how much bone was already removed, just to do that portion. And now we're going to cut a wedge of bone out of this foot and shorten it and lower it so it gives them a better range of motion. Here we go. I'm going to take a wedge of bone out from the top here. Now what we're going to do is remove that symmetrical wedge of bone. There it is, a wafer thin symmetrical piece of bone. Very nice. And now that's going to shorten this bone, that's going to go down and back, and that's going to give us enough room to go up and over to increase the range of motion. And now we're just going to screw this back together. Well, as you can see, the bone was cut from here. It stopped there and went back that way. We took the wedge out of here to shorten this bone backwards. We temporarily put the bone back together to hold it in place. We put a guide pin in. That's where the screw's gonna go, and we countersunk the top of the bone to stick the screw in right there. So the screw goes over the pin, the cannulated portion right there, goes down, right into there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw the screw into the hole, tighten this bone to that side. The incredible thing is that there's so much torque right now on this bone, so much torque on this screw, that I think he would get up and run on his foot for a quarter mile and nothing would happen to it. That's how strong and stable this is. And so when he steps down with pressure coming up here, it actually impacts this fracture site, so it makes it even more stable. This V cut here prevents it from sliding down, or this part prevents it from sliding up, so it's highly stable based on the geometry of the bone cuts. Now we're going to remove the pins and just clean up the bone. And I always like to double check. I always do. When I pull the bone out and I look at the bottom, no, the screw is not coming out of the bottom of the bone. It stops just before it. So we just got done polishing up the bone here, cleaning up, and you can see how nice and smooth that looks all the way around as compared to what it was looking like before. You can also see the other side completely all the way around, nice and smooth and also the opposite side of the joint. There's a bunch of bone fragments here. We smooth all this around, all the way around to the other side. So now, when it articulates, it articulates nice and smoothly like this, see? The bone rises up, no longer collides. Remember before, 
You can only move it about this much. Well, watch this. We are at beyond 90 degrees to the other bone. We go all the way down to it. See that? It is ready to be sewn up. When the numbness wears off, the best thing is there's going to be no pain. This is the subcutaneous layer. As you can see, it's well preserved. These are all the neurovascular bundle. There's a nerve that runs right along the medial marginal vein there. And if you flip the sub-Q over, you can see that we've sewn up the deep fascia very nicely. It's sewn all the way across this way and then vertically from way down there all the way back up. You see the final knots right there. So this tissue is going to lay right across this, way up, way up above there. Once I bring this skin way up and this skin way down, we'll cover the whole thing. You close up just like that. We'll start with the seat, which is right here. And it's going to go through the skin here. What we'll do is go back and forth through the skin layer. For the running subcutaneous stitch, it's a cosmetic stitch. So we don't see any of those railroad tracking marks through the skin. And you close down and run all the way through just like All right, well, we're done. We're just going to basically bandage up his foot. You can see the bump is now gone. It's not bulky here or on the side. Just got done sewing up his skin. Again, we can see that we bend it up and down. Look at that. Look at that motion. Look at that. Nice and smooth inside. There's no gritting or grinding or something that we call crepitation occurring right now. And there it is. All right. You can be one happy camper. All right, this is Gerard's foot from before surgery. It had something that's the cousin of a bunion called hallux limitus, where the bunion really grows more up on top of the joint versus the side, although he does have some significant bone growth here on the side. But look at all of the flaring of bone that's abnormal here, that right there, all this. This is actually a fractured piece of bone off the side of the, of the big toe itself. And so here it is before. Now let's look at it afterwards. This is how nice and clean the joint looks now. We've aligned the joint properly. You don't see any of that bone that was flaring out to the sides. And if we look at his foot on the side view, we can see that the bone was really growing up high up on top of the joint. These arrows are pointing to the abnormal bone, but everything above the tip of my finger is pretty much abnormal. After surgery, we can see how everything's nice and smooth and clean right here. So when this bone articulates up, it glides up and it doesn't jam this part doesn't jam or hit there. Again, this is a side view, so the toe's gonna end up bending like that. So let's look at Gerard's foot right down here. This is now just five days after surgery. Gerard came four to 500 miles to get here from the Bay Area. He was looking at his foot, he just started touching and said, well, this is your foot, Gerard. It's just five days after surgery. How much pain is that, Gerard? That's no pain at all, which is pretty, pretty remarkable. Look at Gerard. So, Gerard, tell us how you found us here. Yeah, I googled um, painless bunion surgery and I had friends who had uh, bunion surgery and it's very painful. So, I thought on, on the lark, I thought, is there such a thing as a painless bunion surgery? Googled it, Dr. Moore came up. Um, I was skeptical, of course, because it's the internet. Went through the site, went through all the reviews, decided to press my luck. Everything seemed to check out and uh, couldn't be happier that I did. I've been doing this 30 years. I've been developing these evaluations for every single patient because it's so hard for people to believe that it's possible to have painless bunion surgery. Here's Gerard's review right there. And all my patients have to sign it and date it on the back side. There's another evaluation for the surgery center. A test of what he had said here. That's right. Every evaluation has the patient's name and contact information in case anybody wants to question the validity of this statement. Absolutely. Yeah.